Good evening, everyone. Ads here from Unity Trading Group. Back on a Tuesday afternoon. Man, it's been, what a week it's been. And it's only Tuesday. Anyway, let's get started. Before we start, hit that like button, tap the subscribe button if you can. And of course, tick the little bell to stay updated on all of our future content. There's more coming. Of course, there is, uh, I, well, first and foremost, apologies for my absence. Uh, we didn't do a, a session on Friday, <clears throat> and I struggled to get uh, in front of the screen yesterday, but I did release a small video on trading view, so hopefully you guys got to check that out and uh, see my immediate thoughts on BTC, which we're going to have a look at right now. In the way of Bitcoin, what are we looking at? So there was two levels of supply that we were looking at for BTC, one of which is where we're at now, the other was around this level here. So not surprising for BTC as we broke out of this downwards sloping formation, uh, as we broke out, we were testing the upper ranges of this level of demand, which, from, which formed from the previous pivot here at around the 24th of March. So currently speaking, we are looking like we are going to push through this level here. Now it's still early days, uh, in when I say that, I mean, uh, we haven't broken it yet. So there's still an option that we could fall or that could be the swing target from this level here at 50. Um, so I'm not counting my chickens before they hatch. However, we're looking like this could continue at least to our liquidity area that we identified yesterday at 59k, which is a nice round level of resistance as well. So that's one to look out for for BTC. Not only this, and uh, we're looking on the side of the bears at the moment, we're looking at a steamroller overbought condition. And of course we are trending well above the RSI, the 50 RSI on the uh, the side of the bull. So it could go either way. There's a little bit that, we, that needs to happen. Of course, uh, you know, in the next little bit, we need to see this level broken. And of course we need to see a retest of our liquidity area to the left at 59. So that's going to be the area that I'm looking for. It's a thousand dollar swing from here, about eleven hundred bucks, and uh, I think it's got the, the legs to do it, at least to get to our level here before we see some any sort of movement to the downside. <clears throat> now, speaking of downside, let's identify some levels to the downside that could be of interest for BTC. Now, one speaks to me pretty clearly, which is that one there. We've had a retest already there, and of course, one speaks to me here as well, but. Um, in, in any case, well, let's get rid of this one. Let's keep the ones that we've got on the chart currently. So, oops, one brush. So we've got this one here. We've had a retest to the right-hand side. So if we do come down from here, then I'd be looking for 55K. That lines up very nicely with that round number. And of course, if I put our gravy train indicator on, we're going to see that now is corresponding nicely with that, uh, that cloud area that we are sitting in that gray no trade zone, that gray area there. So as we do move to the right hand side, you're going to see that area, that cloud area correspond nicely with that level of demand. And of course, if you are interested in gravy train, you can check it out below in the description. So next one we'll have a look at this evening is Ethereum. Now it's been a few days since we've looked at Ethereum and, uh, Safe to say that we have moved through the target that we initially had. So let's clear up the chart and uh, get the ball rolling on ETH. Let's get rid of gravy train for a second here. And we've got the pivot point up the top here that looks nice to me. So this pivot point looking sharp for the move for ETH. And of course we do have a pivot point up the top here as well. That will play into the hands of ETH if we do get there uh, for this chart. But in the same sort of scenario as, as BTC, where we're looking at the extremities currently, if we're looking at levels like Steamroller, we are looking at the extremities of the market swing, and this could kick off a movement to the downside if we don't push through this level as we as we sit, excuse me, as we saw on BTC. So a very familiar chart that we're looking at, and of course, if we are to break down. We are looking around this area for Ethereum in the middle of no man's land at around 16.75. If I put the gravy train indicator on again, we're looking for these movements here. Of course, we do have some flat cloud on the left-hand side, which would correlate nicely with the liquidity that we see to the left. 
So that area speaks to me nicely. And of course, we do have our level of demand sitting there at around 16.75. So looking like that could be on the cards for ETH. If we are to move to the upside and get some volume injected into uh, Ethereum and we are to move upwards, I'd be looking towards this area here at the 1950 area uh, before obviously our daily level of supply at the top here at 2000. So interesting levels. We are butting heads against the gravy train resistance cloud now as well. So that's another uh, shout out to the bears. So we'll see what happens over the next little bit. Next one I have a look at tonight is ADA. <clears throat> Now ADA, I um, I was having a look at this over the weekend, uh, just when I had some f had five minutes to myself, and it was sitting nicely around the 61.8. So not a bad area for a DCA. If you're looking for ADA, we did push through, make some high high in comparison to the left hand side here, and of course we have pulled back and sitting nicely on the 118 area for ADA. There is obviously more chance that we could see downwards movements for ADA since we haven't made any ground uh, above or you know above the 50 currently at 1.13 so if we are to move to the downside for ADA a retest of the 105 area would be on the cards in my opinion uh, however a move into the upside is definitely on the cards as well seeing that we have broken some of that leftward structure or that, that uh, immediate structure to the left of course and we are sitting above the 50 RSI so not bad for ADA uh, but we'll, this remains to be seen if we do head down further I'll be looking to average in and DCA myself into Cardano but looking like the 61.8 is okay for now but we'll revisit this over the course of the the rest of this week next one I have a look at tonight is XRP so moving to the upside for XRP which is a nice change for the pair of course it's a little bit sporadic in the way the, the candlesticks are. But if we are to see XRP move anywhere from here, it'd be the 60 cent mark to the immediate left-hand side. You can see we have reached for that level now. And uh, of course, that's the area that I'd immediately be looking for for, uh, for XRP. There's a few candlesticks to the left-hand side that really say we could you know, hang around here looking at that green candle just in the middle there uh, for that. That's the one there. And that corresponds nicely with the liquidity or the the rejection the rejection excuse me that we had off 60 cents so that could be the next option for xrp last but not least for tonight the dxy so first and foremost the dxy is regulated market not financial advice of course just ideas and opinions here at team utg however the, the dxy is something you should never ignore uh, because it's going to give you insight on a lot of markets that are available to trade that are paired against the USD. We're looking at USD pairs in crypto. We're looking at USD pairs in Forex. And of course, a lot of the precious metals that a lot of us do trade time and time again are paired against USD as well. So we're looking currently at this level of supply here that's sitting around. Let's nip it up a little bit uh, to get that zone in a nice level. So you're looking at around this 93 area here. So we did have a retest, or we do have a retest, and we have moved through this level significantly now. But looking at the steamroller indicator down below, and if I turn on Gravy Train, uh, we are still long for, uh, for the DXY, but uh, in need of a bit of a pullback, in my opinion. So if we are to draw from swing low to swing high, let's get that on the chart. Uh, a movement downwards towards our 38.2 or even the 50 and 61 is on the cards for me personally for the DXY. We've, we're at the extremities of our moving oscillators and uh, a movement down towards our FIB levels, whether it be 38, 50 or 61, would give the good these excuse me give these oscillators the the opportunity uh, to move to the downside and cool off a little bit for a possible movement to the upside in the higher time frame or the longer term scale of things so that's what i'm looking at for the dxy anyway thank you for joining me tonight of course i do apologize it has been the first update we've done on youtube for a number of days but we're back on the horse as of today thank you all for joining me again i'm ads from utg and i'll see you tomorrow